Hello, today I want to take a look at the new ultra bright field monitor from Fieldbird, the LUT6. It has 2600 nits and is listed on Amazon for $290 or 290 euros. Uh, on the official store from Fieldbird, you can find it for 247 euros and I even got a discount coupon for 5% off, so I only paid 235 euros on the Fieldworld store. So if you are in the EU, it's much better to buy it from their own store instead of Amazon. But why did I buy this monitor? I have built a rig for filming with my Panasonic G9 for quite a while now, but what kept me from using it was that my old monitor, the Fieldworld F6, was not good in daylight. Even with the hood attached, you couldn't see much in bright sun. So as I was looking for brighter alternatives, uh, Fieldbird just released their LUT6 in, I think, in August. As I already have said, I ordered them directly from Fieldbird and it arrived some days ago. So now let's take a look at this monitor. The monitor comes with an HDMI cable that has a Type A on one end and Type C and D on the other end. It also has a tilting arm for attaching the monitor to your camera or a cage and it comes with a small manual. As the name suggests, the LUT6 is a 6 inch monitor. It is made of plastics, but it feels a bit better than my old Fieldworld F6 monitor. On the left side there are the HDMI input and output. And if you have the LUT6S, the SDI versions, there are also the SDI in and SDI output on this side. On the bottom we have the microphone jack, the DC in 12 volts, DC out 8.4 volts and an SD card for loading firmware updates or LUTs. On the upper side we have the power button and a scroll wheel with a touch function. On the back side we have the battery slot for the NPF style batteries and here you see the cooling fan for the monitor. For mounting the monitor, the monitor has two quarter inch threads, one on the right side. Here you can mount the provided tilting arm and one on the bottom of the monitor. What made me buy the LUT6 besides its brightness is the touch interface. It is much more convenient to use than fiddling with the buttons of my Fearworld F6. To power the monitor on, you just press the power button for about 2 seconds and the LED turns green and after a short waiting time your image from your camera should appear. When you press the power button only short, you turn the touch screen function off or on again. You can swipe up and down on the left side of the screen to increase or decrease the backlight. And when you do the same on the right side of the screen, you increase or decrease the volume. You can either double tap the screen, tap once to turn it off again, or you can push the scroll wheel for about one second and the main menu Appears. After some seconds the main menu disappears after the amount of seconds you set in the options menu. The main menu has six submenus. The first one gives you some assist functions like focus assist or focus peaking and when you activate one function the options become available. For instance you can set the strength of the focus peaking or the color um, you can activate zebras and set the zebra value you have monochrome mode gray, red, green, blue and you have two different modes for false colors please note that you can only have one assist function active at a time when you Activate one, the others are turned off. The second menu lets you display a variety of markers on the screen. You can have a 9 grid, safety markers and a center marker. 
You can also activate a matte to see your safety markers a bit clearer. You can set the color for the markers and you can have all markers active at the same time. But since they share all the same color, it can become a bit confusing on the screen. The third menu gives you several options for displaying your image. You can choose a scan mode. You can choose different video aspect ratios. You have several options for shooting anamorphic mode. 2x1.5, 133 and 125. You can set uh, auto mirror that uh, the monitor flips the screen when you flip the image when you flip the monitor. You can zoom in, freeze the image or show a pixel to pixel ratio. The next menu gives you options for exposing your image and monitoring your sound recording. You can either overlay the different assist functions over your image or you can display them all and the image gets a bit smaller and you have the assist functions on the side of the image. On the right side of the waveform you can see that the battery indicator is shown in the waveform so keep that in mind when looking at the waveform when recording video. In the RGB menu you have some options how the image is displayed on your monitor. You can choose the color temperature, you can adjust the backlight, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue and sharpness. And you can also use LUTs to display your image on the monitor. There are some built-in LUTs. The first four are built-in into the monitor and the other three I have already imported. When you put in an SD card, you can click on LUT import, click on one of the arrows, and it imports all LUTs you have saved on the SD card. And then you can switch between the LUTs, like so. So far I have not found a way to delete LUTs, but when you load new LUTs from your SD card to the monitor, the old LUTs get deleted and it keeps only the new ones. The last menu is the options menu. Here you can set the operation mode of the scroll wheel. You can choose between backlight, volume and zoom. Since you can uh, already adjust backlight and volume via the touch function, I chose the zoom function for the scroll wheel, so now when I just slightly scroll the wheel. I'm zoomed in 100% and I can zoom in further, but just tipping the scroll wheel and push in 100% is nice to have to check your focus. You can also set your language. You can set the transparency of your on-screen display. You can set the time this it takes to turn off the main menu. You can set the volume, mute, mute completely. You can set the fan to auto, high, middle or low operation. I always let it on auto. And you can reset the monitor to factory standard. Besides the main menu, you have a shortcut menu that comes up when you swipe from the button of the screen. The shortcut menu gives you a quicker access to six assist functions. So you could quickly turn your LUT display on or off, or set the false color on or off for checking the exposure. You could set the functions of the shortcut menu buttons by double clicking on the buttons and then choosing the function with the left or right arrows. So what do I like about the monitor? Of course at first the brightness uh, it is much brighter than my old monitor and even in bright sunlight you can clearly see the image. Also the tilting arm is much better than on my older Fieldworld F6. It does not only tilt, it can also pan and it doesn't get loose when you tilt or pan the monitor like the monitor arm on the Fieldworld F6. The touch interface in combination with the scroll wheel is very intuitive to use and very convenient and I find the focus assist function uh, more accurate than the focus peaking on my Lumix cameras. 
While recording this video, the monitor got quite warm and as I noticed later, the fan of the monitor was running but I didn't hear it during the recording and also the microphone did not pick up this uh, sound of the fan. So what negative points did I find so far on this monitor? One minor thing is this wavy edge uh, at the top of the screen. Uh, it doesn't affect the image quality, but uh, Fearworld may have a look at their quality control. Also during my short tests I found that the zebras uh, sometimes show different overexposed areas than the false colors on this monitor or the zebras on my Panasonic G9. I will have to investigate this a bit further when I use the LUT6 in the field. So I've only found these two minor issues so far and I think the monitor is great value for money, uh, especially uh, with the price I paid uh, over the field workshop. Uh, one note on the field workshop, uh, the shipping was from an EU Amazon warehouse. So there's uh, even no risk involved uh, ordering direct directly from them. So that's all for me today. If you have any questions or comments, then please leave them down below. I will probably update this review when I have used this monitor out in the field for quite a while. If you don't want to miss my future reviews, then please subscribe to the channel. And I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!